The Bible says in the Gospel of John 1 verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. One word from God can change your life forever. Welcome to Life in the Word with Pastor Chooks Ozabon. We are now in union with Christ. We have his life and his nature, enabling us to live like him. Your life will not be a testimony. It will be a testimony to the fact that Jesus died and rose again. It will be a testimony to the fact that the curse is broken, the curse is defeated, and the blessing is operational. It will be a testimony to the fact that we are not of this world. It will be a testimony to the fact that our God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ever ask of Him, according to the power. Circumstances do not define you. What defines you is the word of God. Right, we begin our series. Exciting. Well, actually, in addition to what we've said before, on the Holy Spirit and the anointing. The Holy Spirit and the anointing. We want to lay foundation. What is the aim of all this? Equip you for greater works. And so we want to begin to look at the series from today from the word of God. To redirect our attention to our true source of strength and empowerment. Our true source of strength and empowerment. When you understand this, you are not going to be playing in the same field with everybody else. You come into an advantage because now you are walking with power. Praise Jesus. And so we're going to try in the first few days of this meeting to find out who or what the Holy Spirit is. Who or what is the Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. What is the anointing? I'm going to find grace to get answers from the word of God. Clear up some misconceptions. In fact, a lot of misconceptions. Find out how do we walk or function in the anointing. How do we walk in the same miracle walking power just like Jesus? Why are we finding out all this? Faith begins when the will of God is known. When you know God's will, then you can release your faith. And engage the powerful ministry of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Why is this important for you? It takes power to succeed in days like this. You need some power. Hallelujah to Jesus. And so, let's begin by reading a couple of scriptures. Let's read a couple of scriptures. Luke 24. In the King James, God's word says, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Somebody say power. Power. Hallelujah. In the Amplified, it says, And behold, I will send forth upon you what my Father has promised. But remain in the city of Jerusalem until you are clothed. Until you are clothed with power from on high. To be endued with power means to be clothed with power. Glory to God. Every child of God is now clothed with power. Somebody needs to tell you this so that you can have faith in what you can do. Glory to God. Again, John 15. We read verse 26. King James says, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. Glory to God. In the Amplified, God's word says, But when the Comforter, Counselor, helper, advocate, intercessor, strengthener, standby comes. Whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who comes, proceeds from the Father. He himself will testify regarding me. Praise Jesus. Put your finger there and look up. This is one key, a scripture that tells us the main job of the Holy Spirit. What is it? To testify of Jesus. 
to reveal Christ. Hallelujah to Jesus. Again, Acts chapter 2. Let's read verses 1 to 4. The Bible says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. Verse 4, loudly everybody. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Back up a little bit again. Acts chapter 1. Read verse 4. The Bible says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. But wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, you have heard me speak about. Jump to verse 5. The Bible now says, For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Verse 8. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me. But in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Praise Jesus. Now, verse 5 and 8 was fulfilled in Acts chapter 2. You shall receive power. Praise Jesus. What happened in Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, is like this. This is what happened here. The historical background goes thus. Pentecost, please pay attention. Pentecost was a Jewish festival. 50 days after the Passover, Jesus was crucified during the Passover celebration. That's why scripture says in 1 Corinthians 5, 7, that Jesus, our Passover, Christ our Passover has been crucified for us. So he was crucified during the Passover celebration. Seven weeks later, on the day of Pentecost, the resurrected Jesus Christ fulfilled the promise he made to them in John 15, 26, as we read just now, namely, that he will send the Holy Spirit. So on Pentecost morning, while the disciples were praying, a sound came from heaven, like a rush of a mighty wind. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire, resting on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Praise Jesus Somebody asked me, how did I know it was in the morning? If you read further down, after they began to accuse the disciples of, why are you talking in tongues like this, like people that are drunk? Peter now said to them from verse 14, that same chapter, that we are not drunk as you suppose, for it's only the third hour of the day. Now in the Jewish calendar, the third hour is nine o'clock in the morning. Praise Jesus. So it was morning time, glory to God. Now, that accusation, it excites me. These men weren't drunk. They were simply filled. Paul told the Ephesian church, be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled. Be a filled. Why were they thinking they were drunk? They were acting contrary to natural human beings. They were speaking tongues everybody could understand. That means if the Shangan was there, he would understand what they were saying. If the Zulu man was there, he would understand. If the man from Lubumbashi was there, he would understand. Glory. Friends, we are living in the days of the latter rain. You need to hear the things you would say and walk in the fullness of the power of God. Say with me, my life will never remain the same again. Say one more time, my life will never remain the same again. Hallelujah. So some thought that they were drunk or full of new wine. Then Peter preached a sermon from that verse 14 and said, and I quote, This is that which was spoken by prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. The old men shall dream dreams, young men shall see visions. In fact, let's go there quickly. Acts chapter 2. Let it from verse 16. He said, but this is that which was spoken by prophet Joel. 
And it shall come to pass in the last days. Say it, God. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. Verse 18. And on my servants and on my handmaidens. I will pour out in those days of my spirit. And they shall prophesy. Verse 19. And I will show wonders in heaven above. And signs in the earth beneath. Blood and fire and vapor and smoke. Praise Jesus. Brethren, what was Peter saying here? Peter is saying we have entered the last days. Peter is saying what you see is a fulfillment of what was promised. God said a sign that the last days has come is that there will be an outpouring of the spirit. We have entered the last days. The Messiah has come. He has accomplished our redemption on the cross. He has risen and ascended to the right hand of God. Now watch this. Watch this, friends. The interval or the period before he returns again in glory will be marked by an incomparable outpouring. This is what the Bible is saying. Hallelujah. Jesus has come. He's gone to heaven. But before he comes again, that time period, the period of the church, somebody say church, will be characterized by an uncommon, incomparable outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon men and women, upon young and old, upon slave and free, upon far and near. Glory to God. All flesh. Hallelujah to Jesus. And watch this again. The people of God in this period, are going to be people that are not ordinary. They are going to be people born of the Spirit, baptized in the Spirit, filled with the Spirit, and empowered by the Spirit to bear witness, glory to God, to the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. There won't be ordinary men and women. That's why we've been telling you, you are supernatural. You see, what Moses experienced in the book of Exodus, God was showing him a picture. That something could actually be on fire and not be consumed. Do not forget in Matthew 3.11, John the Baptist said, He that is coming after me is mightier than I. He should latch it, I'm not worried to tie. He will baptize you with what? With the Holy Ghost and with fire. This is what happened. That we can have the fire of the Spirit of God and not be consumed. But that fire comes out when we lay hands. That fire shows up when we speak. That fire shows up when we make an appearance. Let me say nothing again. You didn't hear it very well. The period we are living in now. The people of God are going to be a people that are supernatural. Born of the Spirit, filled with the Spirit, baptized with the Spirit, and empowered by the Spirit to bear witness to the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Brethren, we are the evidence of God's word. We are proof that the Bible is true. As I speak this words, I want you to believe God. My life will never remain the same again. Say with me, my life will never remain the same again. Hallelujah. Brethren, we are living in the latter days of the Spirit. We are in the days of the fullness of the Spirit. These are days that Isaiah prophesied about. Joel prophesied about it. Ezekiel and Jeremiah prophesied about it. They longed to see it. We are living in that day. Let me show you what Isaiah said, for instance. Go to Isaiah 44. Uh, look at verse 3. It says, For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed, and my blessing upon thy offspring. Again, Ezekiel 11. Now look at verse 19. The Bible says, And I will give them one heart. And I will put a new spirit within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of their flesh. And I will give them heart as a flesh. That they may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them. And they shall be my people and I'll be their God. Hallelujah to Jesus. Friends, God has revealed himself to mankind in three ways. 
Three key ways. Under the old covenant, he was God for us. If you read Romans 8.31, God's word says, What shall we say then to those things? If God be for us, who can be against us? In the period of the gospels, he was God with us. If you read Matthew 1, 23, God's word says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son that shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. In the period of the New Testament where we live now, he is God in us. 1 John 4, 4, Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Let me digress a bit. Praise Jesus. You see, the greater one in you is bigger than any challenge you are facing now. The power that raised up Jesus from the dead is stronger than anything fighting you. Hallelujah to Jesus. The greater one in you is bigger than any crisis. Greater than job loss. Greater than any setback or mistake you may have made. Glory to God. Greater than any medical condition or any report. Greater than any economy or negative economic condition. Say with me, the greater one lives in me. The new creation is a master of every force outside God. Because God's spirit lives in you. Friends, only religion tells you that there's something out there bigger than you. You know, some ancestral cause or some spirits. Or some altar. Only religion. And they keep saying it because they feed off your ignorance. May God open your eyes to see in Jesus name. Anyhow, back to our story. So, who or what is the Holy Spirit? Note this. Now, the Holy Spirit is not a feeling. Like, I just felt it now. It's not a feeling. And then the Holy Spirit is not a falling. Ah, that I fell down now, that means I'm under the Holy Spirit. No. Can I even say this about people falling down? You see, when you got born again, God's word says you, you receive the fullness of the Godhead. That means God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit came to live in you. Now, since January, you've been walking around with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. How come you haven't fallen? So, the Holy Spirit is not a falling. He's not a feeling. And then it's not oil. It's not cooking oil. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. The Holy Spirit is not a bottle. He's not in a bottle of cooking oil. You cannot bottle God for sale anyway. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Our God cannot be bought or sold. The power of God cannot be merchandised. You can't buy it. He's not in a napkin. Glory to God. You see, there's nothing really new under the sun. If you read Acts chapter 8, from between verses 14 and 20, you know, Philip was manifesting the power of the Spirit of God. They now sent word to the apostles, Peter, come and see what these guys are doing. Acts 20, Peter came about and began to minister in the same power of the Holy Ghost. And there was a man that called Simon the sorcerer. He saw the signs the wonders, the miracles. He offered them money. He said, give me some of this power. Now, that same thing is still happening. You can't sell the power of God. Peter said, thy money perish with you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Brethren, you can't sell the power. Glory to God. The anointing cannot be bottled for sale. Can I even say it this way? You can't pay for anything that came from heaven. You only receive it by faith. Hallelujah. More importantly, the anointing is not oil. Under the old covenant, watch this distinction now. Under the old covenant, before the cross, when God wanted to set certain men in certain offices like the kings and the priests, they will anoint them with oil, which was a physical sign of the hand of God upon them and approval from God. Praise Jesus. That was under the old covenant. But after the cross, when Jesus died and rose again, he no longer anoints men with oil. He anoints men with the Holy Ghost and power. The Bible says, Acts 10, 38, that God anointed Jesus Christ, not with oil, but with the Holy Ghost and with power. 
Further proof of this, notice the disciples were never anointed with oil. Read your Bible. The disciples were never anointed with oil. If you read John 20, between verses 21 up until 23, when Jesus was about to commission them for ministry, the Bible says he breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. He didn't anoint them with oil. Jesus simply breathed upon them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Spirit is not a force. He's not a thing. The Holy Spirit is a person. You want to write that down? The Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is the third person in the Trinity. Now hear this, look up everybody if you don't mind. Although the word Trinity is not mentioned anywhere in the Bible, we see from scriptures that God is three in one. Now there's a specific scripture that explains this perfectly. Look at the book of Luke. Luke chapter 3. Now look at verse 22. The Bible says, And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved son, in thee I'm well pleased. Did you see the three persons of the Godhead there? The Holy Ghost, God the Spirit. He descended in a bodily form like a dove upon him. And a voice from heaven, God the Father, which said, Thou art my beloved Son, God the Son. So the Trinity speaks about God in three persons. In other words, there are three distinct persons that make up the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And they are all equal in every way. Brethren, the Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is fully God. He is eternal. He is omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent. I'll get back to this later on. The Holy Spirit has a will. Again, the Holy Spirit can speak. So he's a person. How do we know? Look at Acts chapter 8 verse 29. God's word says, Then the Spirit did what? Said. Unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to that chariot. Again, that's same Mark chapter 13. Quickly now, look at verse 2. He said, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereon to have called them. Praise Jesus. So he speaks. The Holy Spirit is alive. He's a person. The same as the Father and the Son. And then again, the Holy Spirit can be grieved. This is why a lot of us are not walking in power. The Holy Spirit can be what? Grieved. Look at Ephesians 4. Look at verse 30. The Bible says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. What grieves the Spirit? Things like strife. Strife is a killer. Avoid any atmosphere of strife. Take yourself away from it. Things like immorality. Hallelujah. He said, grieve not the Holy Spirit. Issues of prayerlessness. Hallelujah. And then flippancy. You just talk. Worldliness grieves the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God can be quenched. Glory to God. And then again, he can be lied to. You can lie to the Holy Spirit. If you read Acts chapter 5, look at verse 3. God's word says, you know the story very well. You know, at the early church, excitement. People were selling their property, bringing it to the video of the apostles. They were getting blessed. So Ananias and Sapphira, a husband and wife lying team, sold the land and brought half the proceeds. Praise the Lord. Nobody forced them to do it anyway. But look at what happened. But Peter said unto Ananias, Why had Satan filled thine heart to do what? Lie to the Holy Ghost. And to keep back part of the price of the land. Why is it remained? Was it not thine own? Praise God. Look up please. Let me not complete it. Now, one of the key things again that grieves the Spirit of God or quenches the Spirit is lying. And then again, can I say this? 
When you lie, you sow a seed. You know what that kind of seed is? It's a seed for loss. Because you are telling God you can't do what I want. So let me get it through my strength. And every seed waits. It must bring a harvest. So at times, stop binding the devil when things go wrong. Simply repent. Pastor, I've been lying for a long time. Let me stop. He can be lied to. And then you see, when you tell lies, you are not lying to the pastor. Who are you lying to? The Holy Spirit. Somebody say, Father, help me. <laughs> be sincere in that prayer. Say, Lord, just help me in this matter. Glory to God. So he can be lied to. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is not particularly visible in the Bible because his ministry, his ministry is to reveal. Or bear witness to Jesus. That's why at times he's ignored. But his ministry is what? To reveal Christ. To point, teach, guide people to Jesus. Read again that John 15, the Gospel of John. It says, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall do what? Testify of me. That's why it's not particularly visible. But he's a person. I heard a testimony from um, our dear brother Benny Hinn. When he began to get to know the Holy Spirit. So every morning he would go fellowship with the Spirit of God. Do a lot of worship, you know. Begin to cry tears from his eyes every morning. He did it over and over again. So one day he fellowshiped. Just as he felt he, had, he was done for that day, he was leaving. He felt a hand come out and hold him. Say a little more. It takes a person to do that. Tell your neighbor, the Holy Spirit is a person. Hallelujah to Jesus. I'm praying that we'll get to have a closer walk, a powerful relationship with the Holy Ghost. That this series will not be in vain. We will come out with power. We will walk in the fullness of the blessing. Would you say amen? amen? And so, he can be grieved, he can be lied to, and his job is to reveal or bear witness to Jesus. He is not a force or a thing. Hallelujah. Now, in the Old Testament, the Hebrew word ruach, can I spell for you? R U. -U W-A-C-H was used when talking about the Spirit of God. The word literally means wind. Somebody say wind. Now even the wind associated with breath. Praise God. In the New Testament, the Greek word noema. Can I spell for you? P-N-U-E-M-A is used to describe the Spirit of God. It means breath or breeze. Hallelujah. So we can literally think of the Holy Spirit as the breath of God. Hallelujah to Jesus. If you actually read in the word of God, Psalm 33, I think the sixth verse. The Bible says, by the word of God were the heavens made, and the host of them by the breath of his mouth. The Holy Spirit is the power behind creation. Can I say this? Now, there is no setback or damage or crisis that has happened to you. That the spirit of God cannot fix. He is the power behind creation. If you read Genesis 1 from the second verse. God's word says darkness covered the face of the deep. A picture of destruction. But God's word says. But the Holy Spirit brooded. Hovered. Now no matter the calamity you've gone through. Just yield to the Holy Ghost. Let the spirit of God brood over your life. I pray today in Jesus' name. That no matter the condition in your marriage, your family life, your business. Let the spirit of God hover over that condition and transform it. If you receive that, would you say amen? amen. It's the power behind creation. In closing quickly. Some other attributes and functions of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Number one, write this down. The Holy Spirit is omnipotent. Omnipotent means all-powerful. He is omnipotent, all-powerful. The Bible talks about immeasurable power. That is power to do anything. Power to produce any result. 
If you read Luke 1 verse 25, the Bible says, The Holy Spirit shall come upon you, and the power of the Most High shall overshadow you. This was the word the angel spoke to Mary. As a result of the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, what was physically impossible became possible. What was that? A virgin that had never known a man conceived seed and delivered a child. It takes power to do such things. I pray that you be anointed. That you be filled with fresh power. That you walk in omnipotence in the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is all powerful. Glory. That's why I told you the other day that God did not send us into this world empty handed. He sent us power packed. Don't cry about any problem from today hence. Don't grieve over any issue. You look at it as if it's impossible. Nothing is impossible to the child of God. You are power packed. Luke 24 verse 49 said, tarry ye till you be clothed with power, endued with power, limit breaking power. Glory to God. Now, look at that instruction Jesus gave them. Why did they have to tarry in Jerusalem? Because while Jesus was here on earth, all the disciples functioned under his anointing. But he had to go to be with the Father. So they needed their own individual anointing. Now, what was promised to the disciples is what was promised to you. And we received it the day we got born again. You were clothed with power. Say with me, I am power packed. Hallelujah. It's interesting to notice as well, it wasn't only to pastors. It wasn't only for bishops. It's for every believer. Upon my sons and daughters will I pour out my spirit in those days. Oh, may God open your eyes to see and your ears to hear in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Paul the Apostle describes the power working you now as immeasurable. It cannot be measured. Pythagoras' theory cannot measure it. The almighty formula cannot measure it. You can't measure it in depth or in kilometers or miles. It is immeasurable. Paul also describes it as unlimited. Nothing can limit it. No economy, no medical condition can limit it. No nation, no geographical location can limit the power of God at work in you. You are power packed. Oh, glory to God. It's immeasurable. The Bible now says it is surpassing, the surpassing greatness. That means it beats every known barrier. I pray that God will open your eyes to see to what you have already, what God has empowered you to do. The child of God is not a weakling. The child of God is not a victim. God never makes victims. Only the devil makes victims. The child of God is a winner. He's a champion. The Bible describes him as more than a conqueror. The Bible describes him as righteous. He has the life and the nature of God. As I keep telling you, you cannot separate the nature of God from the ability of God. What makes a lion a lion is his nature. It's in his nature. Glory to God. What makes a lizard a lizard is in his nature. What makes you a child of God is in your nature. You are a world bitter. You are special. You are a king and a priest. You are a champion. You are a hero about to manifest. You are power packed. You are anointed for your day and your hour. I declare that the world is about to hear about you. The world is about to hear about you. You are about to break out. You are about to step out. You are about to shine for the world to see. All surpassing greatness. Hey, brethren, I'm excited here. Let me show you something. Put your finger there. Go back with me to John 3. Glory. I'm getting excited. I'm getting excited. You know what? These are the days of the latter rain. And God is moving in his power again. Thank God we're talking about the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You are going to see yourself heal the sick. By the time we are done with this series, you'll be laying hands on cars. You'll be laying hands on people. You are going to stop at the robot, see a beggar, step out of your car. Like Peter did on the Acts of Apostles chapter 3. He called that man, say, stand up, pick up your bed and walk. You are not going to allow any negativity around you again. You know the man had been dead 
there begging for a long time and a cripple. He asked Peter, do you have some money for me? Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus, stand up and walk. I see you operate in power. I see you manifest the giftings. I see you walking and you anointing. These are those days the Bible talked about. It is not just written. It is for us to believe and walk in. If you receive that shout, yes. These are the days of the Holy Ghost. Church, you got to hear me. These are those days. You know, we used to say these things before. That I would dance like David danced. In 1 Samuel chapter 6, God's word says that David danced with all his might. That is not for us. We don't dance with our might. We dance with the ability of the Holy Ghost. We dance whether there is music or not. We dance whether the choir is playing or not. Because our dance is of the spirit. I heard the story from a man called Kenneth Hagin. In one of his meetings, a sister began. She began to dance in the spirit. She began to dance. A brand new shoe was worn off. She was dancing in the spirit. She danced to the edge of the staircase. And she stepped out of it without knowing. She began to dance on air. So we don't dance with our might. We dance with the ability of God. That ability is inside your spirit now. Brethren... These are those days the Bible talked about. Where we might not need to see a doctor. You just wake up in the morning with a strange sensation. You said, be gone in the name of Jesus. You pick up your waistcoat. Pick up your blazer. Wear your jeans and then walk out as if nothing happened. These are those days. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. These are those days. Let me show you something else. Glory to God. Now, if you read John 3. Look at verse 6. Ay, ay, ay. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. He is not spiritual. He is spirit. The spiritual are those who, who through religious exercise try to attain that realm. We don't try to attain that realm. We are born into that realm. We don't need some white garment or incense to get into the spirit. We are born into the spirit. He that is born of the spirit is spirit. And I also told you something. That these days are going to be marked by people that are born of the spirit. Look at something about them. Look at verse 8. God's word says, The wind bloweth, we are it listed. And thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goest. Find up and read loudly with me. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. You know what that means? The child of God is unpredictable. You may laugh at me today, but you cannot predict my future. You may laugh at my mistakes today. You may mock me. You may say wrong things. You may call me names because you know all the problems I've gone through. But you don't know what my future looks like. You know why? The child of God is unpredictable. Why is that so? There are forces working in his life, supernatural forces, that would make it possible that his life can change overnight. You might see him broke to Today, tomorrow he will be the richest man in the area. You might see him sick now. Tomorrow he'll be bouncing and jumping and shouting. You know why? There are supernatural forces at work in his life. You cannot write him off. I know you hear the sound. You see the sign. You see the scars. You see the mess all my mistakes have made. But you still cannot write me off. It is not over until God says so. The Bible says, so is every man born of the spirit. You can't write him off. You know why? Favor is on his side. The blessing is on the side. The throne of God is on the side. The grace of God is on the side. The anointing is on the side. And he got the Holy Ghost on the inside. Somebody shout yes. So is everyone born. People tell me they said that a horrible thing about me. I said, well, 
Let them say what they want to say. All they see is where you have been. They ain't seen where you are going to. All they see is what has happened. They can't see what can happen. Our God is a wonder. Beloved, don't write yourself off. I know you got a bad record. I know the evidence is there for them to see. But God has a stronger evidence. The Bible says, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. What is the witness of God? That you are blessed and highly favored. That you are like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring it forth its fruits in the season. Your lips also shall not wither. And whatsoever you do, it shall prosper. I prophesy by tomorrow you will have a testimony. By Monday you will sing a new song. In the name of the Lord Jesus, if that is you, shout yes. You can't write of a child of God. Sweetheart, I know they know the problems. I know they know the mess that's been made. I know they know what you've gone through. But they cannot determine your future. There is a power at work in you. God's word said, so is everyone born of the spirit. Don't write him off. His case can change as we speak. Our God is a supernatural God. And the child of God is not spiritual. He is a spirit. Try and sit down if you can. Let me finish this. Hallelujah. Don't write yourself off. Don't give up on your future because of what men say. Hallelujah. Men can only say but God can do. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ever ask or think according to the power that walketh. Notice the power is not as if it walked. It walketh. The word walketh is in the present continuous. That means as we are here, that power is working. Doors are opening for you. Battles are being won for you. Things are being restored for you. Promotion is coming your way. Favor is coming your way. God is taking you from where you are now to where you should be. If you receive that, shout amen. The power that walketh in you. Understands, friends? God didn't send us empty-handed. He sent us power-packed. Glory. Power-packed. Now the Holy Spirit is the one who empowers you for service. He empowers you for service. In other words, he empowers you to walk in the kingdom or manifest the kingdom. As you are now, let me say this quickly. The kingdom of God is within you. And there is nothing bigger than the kingdom of God. The Lord give you understanding in Jesus' name. You are power packed. Hallelujah. And the spirit of God anoints you or empowers you for service. I'll get back to that later. But look at what he can do. Judges chapter 14. Look at um, verse 6. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would have rent a kid. And he had nothing in his hand. But he told not his father or his mother what he had done. Praise God. What happened here? Samson went on a visitation with his parents. On their way back, a young lion attacked them. Samson without a weapon. That word rent is the old English word for tear. He tore a lion apart. The Bible records that he had no weapon in his hands. Why was he able to do that? The Spirit of God came upon him. Again, look at verse 19. Same Judges 14. The Bible says, And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he went down to Ashkelon and slew 30 of them, and took their spoil, and gave change of their garments unto them which expounded the riddle. And his anger was kindled, and he went up to his father's house. Praise Jesus. Samson posed the riddle, and to cut the long story short, to pay, you know, the agreed terms, he went and slew 30 men. How can one man kill 30 men without a machine gun or a sword? How? God's what says, and the spirit of the Lord came upon him. Praise the Lord. 
Now, when the Spirit of God comes upon Samson, in the twinkling of an eye, in an instant, he's transformed from being an ordinary man to a superman. In an instant. Hallelujah. The very good news is this. The Spirit of God doesn't come upon us. He lives in us. John 7, 38. God's word says, He that believed on me, as the scripture said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. This is why we insist in Grace House. Every child of God is a superman. What would happen to Samson and transform him in a second lives in you permanently. You can't stay sick. You can't stay broke. You can't stay bound. The days of your struggling with demons are over. You just take authority and you tell them where to go to. For the child of God, the anointing is just not upon it is also within. Try not to miss any of this series. We're going to show you what you can do and who God says you are. Finally, as I finish, look at 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. The Bible says in the King James, Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, where the Spirit of the Lord is, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Listen to the Amplified. The Bible says, Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Emancipation from bondage. Freedom. How can you be bound or broke? How can't that business do well? The Amplified of that John, John 7, 38 says, Out of his belly shall continually flow springs of life-giving waters. That means something was dead before. You step into the situation. Because of the life coming out of your spirit, the thing comes alive. I speak over you this morning. Whatever was dead in your life comes alive. Whatever was broken... Whatever was missing, disjointed, destroyed, comes alive. We speak a release of the Spirit upon you for newness and a new beginning. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Jesus.